Hello, and on behalf of the IASA, welcome back to our IASA Virtual Leadership Series. We're here today for episode four on fostering collaboration and teamwork. I'm Darren Reffitt. I'm the Director of Product Marketing Excellence with Guidewire Software, and I'm here today again with Carrie Crockett, our Executive Director, and Kathy Elwood, the President and Founder of Elwood Enterprises. So we closed last week on the communication topic, talking about how communication can foster teamwork. And that was a great segue into this week. So let's uh, pivot this week and start talking about behaviors uh, and then talk a little bit about technologies that can help us to foster collaboration and encourage teamwork between our teams. Uh, Carrie, do you wanna start? Sure. Um, I think one of the things um, when I'm thinking about collaboration and how I'm working with my teams is um, really making sure that you are giving your teams the green light to communicate openly and honestly. Um, I think it's so important. Sometimes people are sort of, um, they feel a little restrictive. They feel like they're not able to speak honestly. And so just, I think from a leadership standpoint, it's really important to make sure that people know that they have uh, that sort of permission to be able to speak that way. Um, I think the second thing is really making sure that you're val valuing everybody else's perspective. You know, everybody comes from uh, unique backgrounds and they all have different perspectives and making sure that everybody on that team is valued and what they have to say is important, I think is critical in, in, in really fostering that collaborative spirit. I, I completely agree. And when I talk about diversity and the importance of diversity on teams, I always use the example of YouTube and, uh, and when YouTube was first getting started where 10% of their videos were appearing upside down and no one in the room could figure out why because no one in the room was left-handed. <laughs> and I mean, that's, that's one pretty blatant example of it, but it's amazing how much diversity just brings new ideas and new perspectives and helps you do better and be better uh, across the board. Um, Kathy, uh, let's jump over to you. What, some behaviors that you think help foster teamwork and collaboration. So I'm gonna take this, <clears throat> excuse me, from a leadership perspective. And I think it's really important to remember that accountability is key. But when I think about accountability, I also think about what do we as leaders do to establish the accountability? So, Carrie talked a little bit about valuing different perspectives. Well, what does that mean? That means really reinforcing it, you backing it up with possibly including collaboration and valuing diversity and seeking the input of others into a person's own objectives. But do, are you inclusive? You know, do you really include the input and perspective of others into your own performance objectives? Do you hold people accountable? Do you set goals and objectives for each of the people to do the same? Do you find roles, responsibilities? Do you encourage people to be collaborative in team meetings? Do you encourage them to actually seek input from other people on projects, on activities? And I, I think another perspective that is important is that we not confuse collaboration with consensus. And that becomes extremely critical in a virtual team meeting because here, here's an example. We're doing one of these meetings, a Zoom meeting or whatever, teleconference, however you're doing the meeting. And too often, we think we're co collaborating because we have everybody in the virtual meeting and some people are being quiet. They've emotionally or mentally checked out. That's not collaboration because you've shown up. Yeah. It could be consensus. So what really happens, and I think I've talked about this before, is that you really need to define the boundaries in the rules of engagement up front. And that's why deliberately preparing your meeting, your agenda, the rules of engagement, what you mean by collaboration, what you mean by consensus, what you mean by dissent, becomes absolutely critical if you want to have real collaboration. So then, because I think communication and the words, the definitions become paramount. The other thing that I think has to happen is it's okay to disagree. It really is. I mean, the best teams I've ever seen 
actually love to challenge assumptions. I think most people, if given the same set of facts, although in this world, I mean, we all have different sets of facts, right? I, alternative facts. But, you know, in seriousness, um, we, if we are given the same set of facts, you know, it's okay to challenge the assumptions. And one of the words I used to like to use with people is it's also okay to be politely pushy. Politely is the key. Challenge the assumptions. Ask, help me better understand how you reach that conclusion. Can you show me and give me your insight and your perspective? So it's when you get to the point where you're not, you know, shoving your opinion down their throat, but seeking first to really understand what's behind their point of view and to try to put yourself in their shoes. And it's, it's called active listening and really taking time to think about what did that person say? Why do they want to do it that way? And is there something that I, as a leader or as a peer, am really missing? I agree completely with that. I mean, that's so important. I think, um, you know, the whole goal of collaboration, obviously, is to help your teams move to a place where they're able to come up with new ideas and, and um, embrace new perspective, perspectives and really, <clears throat> pardon me, move towards, you know, clear goals and, and gain better solutions and really drive the goals forward so that they are producing the products or the services or whatever there is their role is to a new level, right? And it's really about solution finding and, and problem solving. So you really need those types of things in place to have full collaboration. I think something else that we need to think about is making sure that we are, when we're talking about collaboration, we're talking about making this the norm. In, in, in all aspects of how we're working with our teams, right? It goes beyond or it needs to go beyond just those special projects that people are focused on as they're working in groups, et cetera. It's really about, <clears throat> I think, leveraging everybody's strengths so that we're all finding those better solutions. And that can be across the board, as I said, you know, no matter just you know, what we are working on, it should be across the board in terms of you know, all projects and all conversations and, and um, all goals that we're working towards. I think that's critical. Absolutely. So we definitely want to talk about uh, some technologies that our leaders should be thinking about, especially in our in our new normal. But uh, before we do that, one of the other aspects, of course, of teamwork is how do you bring a sense of team and how do you encourage people to feel like they're, you know, rooting for the same goal and all moving in the same direction. So why don't we talk about some fun ways or, or interesting ideas of ways that you can get your employees on your team engaged in feeling that team spirit? Because obviously, you know, if you're used to working in an office right now, you might be feeling very disconnected and we're just not having that same, those hallway meetings aren't happening, right? So what can we do virtually that can help foster those kinds of, you know, team, team feelings that, that keep us all moving together? Uh, why don't we start with you, Kathy? Okay, I think I mentioned last week that a significant portion of people, in fact, I went back and checked my notes, 65% of people who work in remote environments have never had a team building experience online. And that doesn't surprise me. Well, I say it's time that they do. So there's all different kinds of ways. And instead of trying to you know, grapple with what do we do? Why not be creative and have a little bit of fun? So let's embrace COVID, okay? I mean, there's not much we can do. What is the worst, you know, thing that's happened to you as a work from home person um, since you've been here in the COVID environment? Like what happened when you were trying to be online during a meeting? What was the thing that happened that just kind of like totally disrupted your day? Whether it be your kid, you know, coming in and, you know, making fun of you, you know, wanting lunch, crying, maybe, you know, somebody walked by. I saw um, a, one of those Facebook posts where somebody walked in without their, um, you know, jeans on, they had their undershorts on and the wife was online, you know, trying to do a video conference and she's just like, oh, you know, so, I mean, you could share your best, you know, Facebook story or your best Instagram post. You can do all kinds of fun things that get people laughing and they don't have to be inappropriate, but you know, get people to tell stories. 
And I think things that make people laugh and are fun, that show the personal side of you, you know, that illuminate who you are and also go a little bit deeper in sharing with everybody what you're going through too. And it's always good to start with the leader because it shows a little vulnerability. Yeah, I, I can't agree with that anymore. I mean, that, that's, that's, that is critical to make sure that that message is coming from the top down in a sense and from the bottom up as well. I mean, we all um, have to make sure that we are being open with each other as we're going through this process and making sure that we keep that human aspect um, front and center. Um, I think to follow up on, on some of those things, um, you know, in terms of how we're using um, some technologies in, in terms of making it sort of a fun environment, because it can't always be about work, right? We don't have those opportunities in the hallways and, and casual chats in the, in the break room, et cetera, like we used to. Um, so what about things like, and this is pretty common at this point, doing those Friday afternoon happy hours where you schedule 30 minutes at the end of the day on Friday, everybody gets their favorite beverage. You just kind of sit around and you, you just sort of talk, you know, virtually, um, share how your week went, share what's happening in your home life. If you feel comfortable with that. I mean, those are the things I think that connect us as, as humans, as coworkers. Um, and I think it's just so important at this time. Uh, we we just started doing those, and we do them as a as a broad marketing team. And our our CMO Brian Desmond, every week someone brings up a a topic that we'll do. Uh, last week we talked. One week we talked about uh, what's your favorite movie. Last week we talked about if you could have one person in your home for a week during this all happening. You know, one live person. Who would you have? And people are selecting Ellen DeGeneres or. Um, I just wanted a massage therapist. That's all I cared about. But I, uh, so we, we started doing them in our smaller group and it dawned on us that um, we were doing happy hours, but we switched it now. We're doing a weekly um, coffee chat a little earlier because we have two employees over in Europe who just weren't feeling like they were part of the team because mm -hmm. we couldn't really make that happen. So we're kind of alternating them because there's some people who, you know, We've got people everywhere from the West Coast all the way out to Germany, and we need to account for those. And I think that's um, a critical point to make, Darren. I'm glad that you brought that up as it relates to time zones. I know we talked about it previously on um, another yep. one of our series, but it's just important to make sure that you are taking those types of things into account and that you do have those opportunities to include everybody. Absolutely. I think our, our team members both joined uh, the first one of those we did this week, and I think they were excited that we you know, thought about them, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. we'd, we'd had a couple of the other type. Um, Kathy, any other thoughts on, on fun and things we can do? So, yeah, this was actually kind of, this was one of my favorites so far. I, I'd been talking to people about some of the ways they're handling it. And this one woman happened to be married to a, a DJ. And the company she worked at had just, right before COVID, had outsourced one of their operations to India and and so you know they were going through a huge massive cultural change anyway so what they did is they decided to get um, all Indian type music and learn Indian dancing and so the director of the department decided to put on a dance show with her husband doing the DJ music you know playing Indian music and so during their during their meeting their team meeting she's doing dancing through the video. And I mean, like at first people were kind of blown away. And then I wound up telling the person that's telling me this story, it's like, this is so cool because that gives you a side of that leader that you would have never seen before. And more important, she's building a bond between the teams and more important, she's trying as hard as she can to do something to ease the stress of all of you, cut her some slack. Yeah. And I personally, you know, feel really strong about cutting people some slack. We're all going through stuff that we've never gone through before. This is a trauma, guys. Yeah. And it's, it is really stressful. And the more that we can do as leaders to just let people know that we're going to get through this, but we need to all remember to cut some slack. Well, speaking of slack, um, the, the two different directions. Number one, we want to talk a little bit about technology, but uh, there's also great ways that you can use Slack to, to do these kinds of games. On our Slack, we have a couple channels that I belong to. One of them is a local office about 30 miles away. And every Thursday, there's a new game or puzzle, a logic puzzle or a word puzzle 
or something like that that gets posted. And it's great. It just keeps you engaged. So you can use a lot of these technologies we're about to talk about um, in ways that can be very creative and lead to teamwork, not just to trying to achieve a, a project goal. But let's turn to that technology because we are, you know, we are trying to keep these pretty tight. Um, and, you know, what technologies, why is technology important? Let's start there, uh, Kathy. Why does that matter for, for our leaders? Okay, well, first, and it's probably obvious, but technology is the key enabler and it's what's making all of this possible. I mean, you can't, you can't shy, away, shy away from any of these tools anymore. It makes your job easier. It makes it possible for us to communicate efficiently, effectively, and get the job done. It's the only way we would be able to be anywhere near as productive. But I, I need to say to you, and it's really important, that not every technology is gonna be able to do what you think it's gonna be able to do. It, you've gotta decide what technology do you need and choose the technology that works for what you're trying to accomplish. There is, from what I've seen, and I've been studying this for a long time because I work from home, and I recommend technologies that you know people ought to be using when they're trying to do things. And you, one technology doesn't fit everybody's needs. Quite candidly, you've got to look at what do you want to do, why do you want to do it, how many people are going to do it, and you've got to find technologies that accomplish your goals in your environment. Yeah, I, I think it's also important along that to, to make sure your team knows when to use what technology. And uh, my last company, uh, one of our uh, system adm admins did a great email because I, I think I mentioned on the last call, like our Slack history only went back about two weeks. Um, and people would use Slack to send files and then not be able to access them or they would store things on the wrong, on a server instead of in, Dropbox. So he did this great email where he just walked through everything in our tech stack and when you should use it and when you shouldn't use it. And it was a great resource just to get everyone on the same page and a great thing to have as, a, as an onboarded new employee to understand when I should use Dropbox versus when I should be using, you know, our main, our main server to store stuff. So, uh, so let's talk a little bit before we close out on what types of tools and technology should people be thinking about? Should our leaders be thinking about if they don't currently have a solution, they should maybe be thinking about implementing? Um, Kathy, why don't we start with you? Or Carrie, I'm sorry, why don't we start with you? Sure, no problem. Um, I think the first thing is making sure that you're organizing the work. So what is it you're trying to accomplish? Are you trying to ensure that you're having ex excellent communication and that the work is flowing back and forth in the way it should? And if that's the case, it's really about making sure you're finding solutions that enable that. But I think the biggest key here is keeping those things simple. I mean, there is a tremendous amount of opportunity and choices out there as it relates to the technology right now. But you know, for your teams, you have to really evaluate, as Kathy said earlier, earlier, evaluate what's important and appropriate for your own teams and how they work and the work that needs to be accomplished. So I think things like, um, as, as Darren has already mentioned, Slack um, is certainly a great opportunity. There's also Twist, which is sort of similar to Slack, but it's not quite as overwhelming as Slack. It's a little bit more simplistic in how it works. And I think then also Google Hangouts is another opportunity to, to take a look at um, as it relates to how you're gonna commun communicate. From the project management side, um, you know, you wanna make sure that you have uh, technology that is really gonna allow your teams to um, uh, move that work forward and everybody has, you know, their own role and they're able to track the work and who has ownership, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and some of the tools that um, we've used there um, have been things like Trello, um, Jira, uh, Asana, all of those are really great project management tools and allow you to track who's doing what and when and deliverables, et cetera. Kathy, why don't we jump over to your side? Uh, any? So, so what I'm seeing that I think is really key, it's not just about sharing files, but it's also about being able to make updates on the fly, if you will. You want to be able to see what you're doing and what I'm doing and communicate together to do it collaboratively at the same time. So we're not having to constantly go back and email documents and version management can be a beast, particularly in the virtual world. So one of the things I particularly like is Google Docs, but you've also got Dropbox and SharePoint and all these different file storage management systems, Trello. 
The other thing I think that is really cool is some of the workflow automation software that help you actually eliminate repetitive and redundant tasks and follow-ups. For example, Microsoft Flow, Monday, anything that helps you streamline your operating environment for the repetitive task, I think is good. Zapier is a good one to look at. You can find a lot of free virtual project management, virtual team management, virtual communication tools. A lot of these are online and they're free um, in the cloud. They're cloud-based. You don't even have to buy anything if you go out and search for it. And I, what I love is the way they price these. So you get free software, if you will, you know, for the um, free version. And then if you want anything else, you pay a little bit more. And it's a like a SaaS model, you know, software as a service, if you will. Yeah. I, I will throw out when you're talking about free software, um, one that I love that is a little bit unique is for actual team, team like, you know, team building. Um, and it's not part of your normal tech stack necessarily, but it's called Tiny Pulse. And they have a three month free trial right now during this. And what that allows you to do is to actually have your teammates send cheers to each other. And, you know, you can tie those cheers back to your corporate values. You can um, do a weekly survey of your employees to see how they're feeling. Um, and, and I think it's great that tools like that are actually giving these free trials right now. Carrie, why don't we jump um, to you? Any others that you'd like to touch on before we close out? Sure. I think just uh, really briefly, you know, we have to make sure that we're addressing, you know, the web and, and video conferencing as well. I mean, we're all probably experts at it by now <laughs> because we have been forced into this type of environment. Um, but, you know, obviously things like Zoom and, and Google Meet, and Cisco WebEx, GoToMeetings, all of those are uh, very simple to use. Skype, you know, those kinds of things are very simple to use um, and very easily accessible. And I think from a collaboration and prototyping um, standpoint, we're really looking at how we're building out models. I mean, I think some technology there that really can help are things like Envision, um, Marvel, um, Marvel, excuse me, and, and Adobe XD. So, so those really can help you in terms of that collaboration and how you're working on prototypes as well. And as we're working through these different categories, it dawns on me that uh, Microsoft Teams really has done a great job of bundling a lot of this stuff together. You know, you can chat on there, you can do the video conferencing, you can do some of the online collaboration stuff. So it, it's, it's a nice solution if you're a Microsoft shop, uh, that's something you might wanna consider instead of having a numerous different ones. I think it's more general. I don't think it's, I think you're, you know, it's like anything else, we're in insurance and we deal with software. When you're buying best of breed versus, versus a suite, you're gonna get different capabilities, but it's definitely something worth looking into if you're looking for an all-in-one solution. Mm -hmm. uh, Kathy, any last ones you'd like to share before we close out? Yeah, and it's really for brainstorming and innovation. I mean, one of the things that I found to be really effective, and a lot of people are into agile stories, and so I think you, I would be remiss if I didn't share a little bit about Bright, a bright idea and idea boards. So you can actually tell your stories online in that virtual world and you can really be very creative. The point here is you can collaborate in a virtual team environment and really be innovative and get things done. And no, it may not be the same as you would do it together, but it's pretty darn close if yeah. you're in the right mindset. So I definitely, I don't think that it's impossible. And that's the point. If you want to do it, it can be done. At, at our new corporate headquarters in San Mateo, there are everywhere you walk, there are walls that are painted with whiteboard paint. So because in the tech world, of course, we draw out things on whiteboards so much. And so we really desperately needed a tool for that to do that online. We went with Miro, which is-, is well, that, well, that was the other one I was going to mention. Right. Yeah. So yeah, so mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's a, several out there, but it just, in, in the tech world, the, the inability to whiteboard is, is like taking your legs out from under you. So let's wrap up. Um, I, I think we're running just a couple minutes long, but let's wrap up with final thoughts. Um, Carrie, anything, you know, how, how would you sum this all up and, and what would you advise people to think about as they move forward out of this session? I think for me, the biggest takeaway on this is we know that the technology is out there. There's a tremendous amount of uh, products out there that can help and assist with 
um, collaboration for your team as well as a project management piece of that as well. But I think we have to go back to how our teams are actually working together and making sure that their perspectives are valued and heard and validated and that they are given the opportunity to speak when they need to speak um, and really given that permission to speak honestly. I think that's critical because if you know you can have all the, the wonderful technology in the world, but if people still feel uh, they don't have the authority or um, the permission to, to speak their honest truth, um, I think that you're not going to have the full collaboration and teamwork that you really want for your team. Definitely true. Kathy? I really do want to build on what Carrie said. You get what you pay for. If you want collaboration, make it part of the person's goals, make it part of their objectives, and reward it. Oh, definitely. What, get, get, what gets recognized and rewarded gets done uh, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, uh, thank you both for joining us again. Uh, and next week, I think we're going to shift gears a little bit. We're going to start talking about culture and how you can manage workplace dynamics, uh, especially as culture has moved from being in the office to being online. Uh, those of you in the audience, thank you for joining us. If you have any questions or challenges you'd like to cover, uh, us to cover, please leave a comment in our YouTube page or tweet at ISA Inc. or tweet at DM Refit, and we'll make sure we cover it on our next session on corporate culture. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Stay safe.